We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Kendall Robertson. I'm a senior sales executive here at Travel Perk in our Miami office. I've been with the organization for about two years now uh, and working within the travel industry as a whole for just around nine. I'm going to pass it over to Chris, who's our other host today, so he can introduce himself. Perfect. Thanks, Kendall. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Chris Lefevre. Uh, I'm an enterprise account manager with Travel Perk based out of our Chicago office. Um, I've been with Travel Perk going on three years. It'll be three years in November. Um, and I've also been in the travel industry, the business travel space for about seven years. Um, so looking forward to working with you guys today. Yeah, 100%. So we are here today to show you the Travel Perk platform. Now it's Seems like most of you are already familiar. I did go through our attendee list and was happy to see that most of you have set up accounts. So you are familiar with our tool. We are a best in class travel management platform that help our clients streamline their processes, saving money and time. And we are going to show you a little bit about how we do that today uh, on our webinar. Now, before we get into the demo itself, I just wanted to remind all of our participants that uh, we will be putting two polls on during this webinar so that you're eligible to win uh, one of the three 150 USD travel credits that we are giving away. So we're going to launch one of those uh, right now. We'll have one at the end of the call and those credits can really be used for any flights, accommodation, you know, train tickets, rental cars, whatever you need. Uh, and we will announce those winners at the end of the webinar. So if we can just pull up that poll, that would be great. All right, and here we have, how does your company currently handle travel bookings? I'm not allowed to vote. So <laughs> if you could please just put your responses in, that would be great. Thank you so much. I'll just give you a minute here to collect those. All right, so it looks like we have a pretty nice mix. Uh, we have some organizations here who really have, you know, travel, uh, each individual traveler managing their own bookings, right, across multiple sites. We would call that sort of an unmanaged travel program. Uh, some of us have an internal admin team who's coordinating this for us. So you have travel managers in place or maybe executive assistants, right, who are doing your reservations. Others are using a travel agency already. Uh, and then we also have, um, you know, some others that are using more of this travel technology platform um, to make bookings on their own. Uh, you know, I would say that's really more where, where Travel Perk sits here. It looks like we have a really nice mix. Uh, so hopefully we can speak to each of those a little bit on this call today. And what we will do uh, in order to start this off is really just going here into the platform itself. So I'm just going to open this up. Hopefully everyone can see my screen all right. Um, but what we are looking at right now is the Travel Perk platform. So I know most of you have uh, your admin accounts already uh, set up, which is really exciting. So on the admin side of the platform, you have a lot more capabilities here than the standard traveler. Uh, the areas that we're going to focus on today will be here in our account settings. We're really going to look at travel policies and approval processes as a way that you can control costs and save money as an organization. We'll dip into the reporting briefly. Uh, the reporting is where you get full visibility on your travel spend and behavior. And then uh, we'll also do an example of a booking itself. So <laughs> you can see here, I already have some flights in. Uh, one of the big perks of Travel Perk is we do get to go to our Barcelona HQ. Uh, that is where Travel Perk originated back in 2015. Uh, so for those organizations, I know we're really focusing on the U.S. today, but if you do have any European travel or European entities, we can definitely uh, service those needs there as well. And you can see here on this uh, main booking page, it really looks a lot like any of the sites you would use for your own leisure travel. 
Uh, our founder is a former booking.com executive. I think you really get that feel here. So we'll go through uh, the ease of the booking experience uh, as part of this demo today. Hmm. Now, starting first in those account settings, we're specifically going to focus on travel management. So travel policies and approval processes. This was an area that a lot of you said that you wanted to go over in today's call. So this could look different for everyone. Uh, and thank you for sending in questions within the Q&A. Uh, we are going to be tracking these and answering them towards the end of today's presentation. Uh, but really the travel policies, um, if you are an organization that's unmanaged, you might not have any in place, right? Or alternatively, you do have them, but maybe they're written out on a PDF and you don't necessarily have a way to enforce them. Uh, if you are using a travel management organization, you are relying on those travel agencies or those agents that you're working with to remember <laughs> what your policies are, um, which isn't always the most streamlined or effective. Um, if you use other, you know, travel tools, you might have familiarity uh, with systems like this. Now, what we would do is if you have your policies already laid out, great, you can share these with us. Uh, you will have a dedicated implementation specialist when you work with Travel Perk, and they will be able to uh, really come in here and lay out your policies for you, work very collaboratively, right, on how you're able to set these up. And they'll also teach you how you can easily uh, make amendments. Someone like Chris is really fantastic because he'll also be able to come in and long-term really help you continuously fine tune these uh, in order to make sure that you are driving the most cost savings across the organization. So a few areas that I really like to touch on um, is this dynamic budget functionality. And I do see a, a question in the chat regarding some flexibility here. So the dynamic budget functionality is going to be perfect for you. Essentially with the dynamic budget, you can set a certain budget that's a maximum percentage above or below the median or cheapest price for a specific search result. So we have this functionality on flights, we have it on hotels. So that gives you flexibility there, right? This is also very flexible in terms of our ability to be able to set up different travel policies per different groups of travelers. Uh, you can set these up, you know, a sort of standard blanket policy for the majority of your employees versus, uh, you know, more fine-tuned policies specifically for, let's say, your executive team who might need something that uh, is a little bit more lenient in, in terms of costs. Uh, I will let Chris talk for a moment now just in terms of some of the ways that he helps his clients sort of fine tune these and drive more cost savings as a whole. Perfect. Yeah, thanks, Kendall. Um, Kendall already alluded to a lot of this, but one of the, the kind of driving value factors of a TMC like Travel Perk is the power of data, right? Um, so one of the things I'm always looking for with my clients is just digging through the reporting after we have a really good um, amount of data kind of pushed through the platform. Um, we can use that data to determine different things that will help inform the policy, right? So even if you're new to the travel management space, um, you can set up a super kind of loose policy to start. And then as we go, we can tighten it up in different ways um, just based on what the data is showing us. Um, and when, when we do that, obviously that's going to start incurring long-term cost savings, right? Um, so a lot of my client, clients will find out, you know, post-implementation that, you know, they frequent a specific route that's actually a little bit more expensive than they thought it was, right? So maybe then we add a route exception into the policy, kind of loosening that up for them or tightening it up depending on what we see uh, and taking it from there. So again, just really using data to drive the decisions is one of the super um, exciting value props of a TMC like ours. Mm -hmm. 100%. And the way that you're able to implement these policies really go hand in hand with your approval processes. And this is something that Chris would also be able to help you streamline as well. So we typically have three different kinds of approval processes that you'll see on the platform. It's strict, moderate, or lenient. Strict means you want to approve everything that's going through. Right, we often see this in place for maybe you have contractors or you have new hires, right, that you're flying out, you want a little bit more visibility and control. 
Moderate tends to be the most standard implementation of the platform. So as long as something's within policy, it goes through and only when it's out, is it going to require approval? And then we have lenient. So again, the C-level execs, they're not necessarily needing approval, maybe just a, you know an executive admin or someone on the finance team wants an approval or a notification. Rather, when that trip is sent through, we can definitely set that up for you. And these travel policies and approval processes will go hand in hand to really control the travel spend, give you visibility. The next piece uh, that work together with that would be what Chris was mentioning uh, as well, which is going to be the reporting piece. So really quickly, I'm going to take you over to reporting. So you can get an idea of the sort of data that you'll have. Now I'm taking you into travel perk environment, right? So we can see some actual data in here, which is nice. Otherwise looking at the reporting is not so exciting. Uh, I'll just give you a quick rundown here. Now, most of you are on the free plan. So on the free plan, uh, you would not have reporting readily available to you. This would be on the premium or pro. Uh, and along with the premium and pro benefits are that implementation specialist and account manager. Uh, I did notice there was a question here regarding the upload of the data um, around your employees into the platform. So that's something that your implementation specialist would be able to help with. They would train you on that. Your account manager can always assist if you ever need um, any additional handholding in that process. It is very simple. It's not something that we're going to go over on today's call, um, but if you want to connect separately, we can definitely run through that together. There's a variety of different ways we can do it either manually or via different integrations that we have on the system, which is very nice. In terms of the data, coming back to reporting, uh, we have a few different things that you can look at here. So it's a live dashboard. You can amend for any time period, look at specific payment profiles. So whether that's credit card, bank transfer, we're very flexible to your needs. You can look at spend by different departments, uh, labels, which are usually different initiatives, whether there's conferences, trade shows, board meetings, et cetera, that you're attending. Uh, events, any group travel needs, we can filter in here as well. And then we have custom fields, which are just different, uh, you know, details that we can put in either on a profile of a traveler or within the booking process so that you always have it in your reporting. Uh, sometimes I will see POs in here, I'll see billable, non-billable. It's really up to your organization, right? We can totally customize this based on your needs. Um, Scrolling down, just so you have a quick visual, we have spend by different verticals. It starts off rather general, cars, flights, hotels, but as you scroll down, the information is going to get a lot more granular. So exact number of flights, those average flight prices, how your booking window is affecting uh, your rates that you're able to secure, which flight routes you're taking, which airlines you're going with and where that's to. So all of this data Chris would use to fine tune your travel policies. Very similar information here for hotels, trains, cars, <laughs> and then we have our favorite areas, which are policy compliance and approval. So we can see exactly how long it takes people to approve your trips, why trips are out of policy. Do you need to talk internally to those teams, have them modify their behavior or maybe modify your policies? And then this last area here that I do like to point out, is cancellations and credits. So for those of you that are completely unmanaged, this might be a process that you are currently doing manually, maybe on Excel, maybe not tracking at all. And if you're working with a traditional travel agent, uh, oftentimes this can be a very manual process of tracking as well. We streamline this for you. We send you notifications if there's a booking or a credit that's tied to someone's name, reminding them proactively to use it on the platform and making sure that's automatically applied. So just a few highlights there on the reporting. And now for this last piece today, what I'm going to do is go here into my personal travel profile so that you can see an example of what it is like to book a trip. This way you can see uh, you know, approval processes and everything that we have in place. So let's just do a standard round trip flight. I have some dates in here for July. My policy is set at economy, right? But we can uh, amend this to anything needed. And then what the system is doing right now 
it is pulling our inventory from all the different resources that we use. So there is the traditional travel agency GDS, but we're also pulling from booking.com, Skyscanner, Expedia, as well as our own direct corporate rates. So with airlines, uh, we do have direct rates. It's usually about a 5% off with American Airlines, Delta, and British Airways. They are a little few and far between, though. Full transparency, <laughs> airlines aren't giving a ton of discounts to anyone. But uh, where we really shine is in NDC connections. So NDC connections are the new distribution capabilities of airlines. Uh, it's essentially how they are sending through the best inventory, the best rates, and we have about 20 of these live. We are the leader in the industry. Our closest competitor has about 10. Most TMCs have about three. Uh, so that's something that we're very proud of here. Now you can see in the results, uh, I'm very lucky and <laughs> these are within policy, um, which is great. I think most of my trips do still require a rule anyway. So just for sake of time, I'm going to go with this first option and I am going to select the most economic uh, rate that we have here. So it looks like there's a, a basic fare that's even just a little bit cheaper, which is great. Now on this next page where it says extras, this is where uh, within my travel profile, had I saved my loyalty programs, et cetera, I would have my uh, loyalty information automatically generate on the booking. Fantastic. Uh, if I did have seat selection, I chose a basic fare with no seats. I would have a map here, right? I can see my carry on luggage. I have information about my checked bags and I'm able to go and add this flight to a trip. Now, just for the sake of this particular webinar, I'm just going to put that this is a test booking. But on this page, I would have the ability to add any additionals here. So in terms of inventory, right, this is another great area of savings on the platform. I like to point out that for hotel stays, we have over 30,000 corporate rates live globally. Uh, the average discount on those are 10 to 15 percent. It can be up to 25 percent, just depending on our relationship with the hotel. And then for cars, all of our, corp our car rates across the board are corporate rates. Uh, that means that they are fixed. They do not fluctuate based on time of year or availability and are highly, highly competitive. Now I'm gonna go ahead and request approval on this. And it would be on this last page that I'm able to make sure that the booking is attributed to the correct cost center, that it's attributed to the correct label, I'm also able to go in and tell my line manager exactly why I need to make that trip. So for my flights, uh, they do all require approval. So I do have the opportunity on the last page to write a little note saying, uh, surprise, <laughs> Stuart and Michael, I'm going to Lisbon in July. Um, I need to book these flights because of X, Y, and Z reason and send that through. So you'll see here, I'm invoicing this to the correct payment profile. I would put my cost center, my label, and here is where I would be able to send that trip through for approval. Now, there was a question uh, that came through regarding modifying and canceling a trip. Once that trip is booked, you're always able to go here into your trips tab and you can very easily go ahead. Let's see, in the past, uh, I have trips where there would be a managed trip sign. Let's see if we have anything in upcoming. No. Typically, you have a managed trip uh, button, right, which leads you to a managed trip form. It's a very succinct way of pushing through uh, requests, right, that can be automated on the platform, at least 60% of them. Otherwise, our customer care team is going to step in, and Chris is going to speak to the value of our customer care services. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Kendall. And this has been great so far. Um, so yeah, we have a full service customer care team, which is just a team of well over a thousand agents globally. Um, we have them in different markets and we have 24 seven coverage now across the board. Um, so anytime that you make a modification request through the platform, if there is any need for manual intervention, our customer care team would be the team that would help you with those changes. Um, you can also call them directly. We have a tap chat functionality built into the platform as well. Um, and there's local numbers in a number of different markets. Um, we also have the concierge tab, um, which is for any requests, I always like to 
use this or think about this as any requests for things that you can't do manually through the platform. You can put in a, a spe specialized request through the concierge tab that our customer care team would actually pick that up and, and be able to do those things manually, either directly with the supplier website um, or in, in different ways as well, just to make sure that that data is also flowing through the travel per platform. Um, so yeah, it's a great, great team of agents um, that can help you with anything that you need, both in trip or when in the process of booking a trip. All right, amazing. Uh, so now that we have reached the end of our webinar here, I wanted to bring up our second poll and leave a little time for Q and A at the end, um, specifically for any questions that we haven't gone through yet so if we could pull up that second poll please all right tough question here is how are you going to use the 150 USD travel credit will it be for flights hotels train ticket rental car vacations not one of the options on here but I voted for it to be <laughs> whatever feels right we'll give you a few minutes to answer that one All right, and it looks like the majority of you are looking to book flights and hotels. That is great. You can take advantage of Travel Perks, fantastic NDC connections and great rates uh, within the airline space or those discounts on our hotel stays. And then as a reminder, we're going to let you know uh, who the winners are at the end of this call, but we can go ahead and go through some of the Q and A here. Um, it looks like we have a question that came in regarding a combination of lenient and strict approval processes. More than happy to take this offline with you as well to go in a little bit more depth here. But I would say uh, strict approval processes, right? Those are when everything is going to need approval. Um, there, in my experience, isn't so much a way to circumnavigate that though. Maybe Chris, you have a particular recommendation. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, to me, Kendall, it sounds like maybe the question is, can we have multiple approval processes, right? Which we absolutely can. Um, I think Kendall alluded to it in the demo. You can set up an approval process for uh, the executive team, which is generally speaking going to be quite a bit looser, right? Um, and may not require approval at all, or if it does, it's gonna be in very limited circumstances. And then maybe for your um, general travelers, um, setting up an approval process for them, it's a little bit stricter. So you can have multiple policies on the premium or pro plan and multiple approval processes that ad adhere to different groups within the organization. Yes. Okay, that's a great answer, Chris. And I appreciate that. <laughs> 100%, we can set up the different uh, approval processes for different groups or individuals, um, combining them within one, not so much, but 100%, we can fine tune this for your different groups of individuals, definitely. Uh, and then we had another question regarding uh, money back from cancellations. So money back from cancellations, it depends um, on the circumstances around that cancellation, I would say. Oftentimes, well, the majority of times, right, if it's in relation to something that the airline has done, then yes, that's going to be a refund for you. And that's something that our customer care team can uh, support you with, right? So you would reach out to them, say, hey, the airline delayed my flight by three hours. Great. We go and talk with them, get that refund. Now, if the cancellation was on your side, right, last minute on a non-refundable flight, there may be a credit that's tied to your name. That credit would be tracked in our cancellations and credits. And then the next time you went to make a booking, you would get a notification saying you have a credit of X amount for this provider. Do you just want to filter for this provider? Uh, once you select that provider, we're making sure that it's automatically applied, which is great. So we're tracking and proactively reminding you to use it. However, Travel Perk also has a solution to these credits, which is called Flexi Perk. So Flexi Perk is our in-house travel insurance. Uh, if you turned it on company-wide, it's a 10% additional cost. If you wanted to utilize a service ad hoc, it's 15 to 18% additional during the booking process. 
And essentially what it means is that you can cancel up to two hours before for any reason uh, prior to flight takeoff or hotel check-in, you will get a minimum 80% refund. Those funds come back to you as travel for funds. They can be used for any individual in the organization and also any service moving forward. So you're no longer going to have credits that are tied to specific individuals or specific suppliers. And it alleviates that sort of frustration around credits being tied to specific people in the case that they maybe don't travel with you in the future uh, or you know, you're not planning to book at that hotel again. Uh, and then we had another question come through in regards to how we work with Divi. So that is a great question as well. Divi is one of our expense management partners. Essentially, the integration allows for a flow of invoices between Travel Perk and Divi. Uh, when you make a booking in Travel Perk with a Divi card, it's instant invoicing, instant payment. That invoice flows over to Divi as a single line item. You'll see the expenditure as a Travel Perk. Uh, expenditure, you'll see the amount there, and then you go into Divi and code it accordingly. Um, with Divi, you are also going to get points and cash reimbursements as a bonus, which is really nice uh, and definitely something we can explore with you in more detail if you are interested in turning that on. It's specifically on the premium plan, not on a pro or a free plan basis. Okay, and we've got a couple more here. <laughs> I love these coming through. Now, I know we only have a, uh, a minute or so, I think, on this webinar. So I do want to be, oh, no, we still have a couple minutes, 15 minutes, wonderful, uh, on this webinar. So I just want to make sure we have time to, to get to them all. Uh, cost for our services, we can definitely go over. Let's see here. What I am going to do is pull up for you our plans and pricing. And we can go over the different plans that we have since we've mentioned them a few times now on this call. So the majority of you are on the free plan right now, right? That's our starter plan. You have five bookings each month, which are free. And then there is a 5% uh, charge for booking. Now the premium plan and pro plan. These are our paid plans. They are the ones that come with your integrations. They come with your implementation specialist, account manager. They come with the flexi fares, which is that in-house travel insurance that we just talked about a moment ago. So the premium plan is a flat $99 per month. That's a flat platform fee and does not change no matter how many users you have on Travel Perk. And then per booking, there is a 3% fee per itinerary. So that is a minimum of $2, maximum of $30. Um, the way that the contracts or the itineraries function, right, is you can actually have up to eight different elements on any itinerary. So that could be multiple flights, multiple cars, hotels, really whatever you need. And then that maximum charge is $30. Um, in terms of the length, right, uh, that you're set in, we actually have complete flexibility there. So Travel Perk is based on a customer success and customer happiness model. Um, what that means is that we don't have a set uh, length of term that you have to be with us. We want to make sure that it's a good fit from both sides and that we're meeting your needs. Uh, if for any reason our services aren't, then you can just give us 30 days notice. Okay, sorry, just bringing my mouse back to look at some of the other questions. We've had quite a few come in here. Chris, would you mind grabbing the next one? I'm having some struggles with yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> no, you're okay. Um, I'm just making sure I'm going in the right order here. Um, looks like the next one is for group bookings. Are there tools that allow for individualized preferences and payments within a single group re reservation? Um, uh, I'm happy to kind of start the, the answer to this one, Kendall, but you might have some more light on this too, because I, I know you have these conversations fairly often. But um, right now, no, it, 
in, in terms of the group booking functionality that Kendall just demoed, which is being able to add up to six people on one any given trip. We don't have the ability to split payment currently, but that is a common request. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if it gets put into our product roadmap in the future. Um, so generally speaking, any any trip, um, single trip has to be paid for, um, and then modifications for that trip also have to be paid for on the same same payment profile on the same form of payment. Amazing, we got a thumbs up on that one. Uh, can we comment a little bit on the partnerships? Would we keep our existing partnerships? Uh, it depends on which partnerships you are referring to, uh, but we do have a lot of different integrations available with Travel Perks. So that's one of the, I would say, big benefits of the platform, right, is that it plugs and plays very nicely with a lot of different tools. So that means from a partnerships perspective, we have a lot of different expense partners, right? Divi, which is one that we talked about earlier, is definitely one of the more popular ones in the US. Uh, otherwise, I would say Ramp, uh, Airbase are other partners that we regularly see, uh, Expensify as well. Some of these might ring a bell for you. Uh, from an HR perspective, we also integrate with other tools. So HR integrations are typically utilized from a user provisioning perspective and occasionally from a platform setup perspective as well in terms of up, you know, those cost centers or departments or approval processes even that we spoke about earlier. Um, so for example, from the HR side, uh, Workday is a very popular one that we integrate with. Uh, we also have Bamboo HR. And then uh, we even have, you know, integrations with Slack. We have integrations with uh, single sign-on tools like Okta and Microsoft Azure. So really depending on the tech stack of your organization, we can see where there's a good fit. And then if there are any uh, tools that we don't integrate with, Travel Perk also has an open API. So if your tech team on your side is comfortable building that out, we supply them with all of the mapping details they might need in order to uh, connect your different softwares. All right, let's see, uh, business travel trends that we foresee. Chris, I feel like this is your area of expertise and you're happy to take this one. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I, many of you guys probably tra travel for business on your own. Um, so you've probably experienced this yourself, um, but generally speaking, um, Pricing is high um, just across the board, across all verticals, um, and it's it's slated to continue that way through the rest of the year and in the next year as well. Uh, there's an organization called Global Business Travel Association that puts out a report every year um, that uh, go, dives into a, a bunch of different metrics and data points to kind of predict things. And their prediction is exactly what I just mentioned, which is pricing is high and will continue to remain high just because uh, of the demand to supply ratio that, that currently stands um, post COVID um, travel has done nothing but increase in terms of the amount of people that are traveling both on the leisure side and on the business side. Um, so very kind of high overview of what we predict, um, but I'd recommend checking out Global Business Travel Association's websites and resources as they provide a lot of great information on that topic. And then the last one that I think we want to address here is how can Travel Perk actually save my company money? <laughs> so the amount of savings that you will enjoy from the Travel Perk platform, I would say, are really going to depend on how you currently manage travel. So organizations that are unmanaged, as we were discussing earlier, uh, are saving around 20%. Uh, on travel. And that's because they are coming from a background of not really having a way of enforcing travel policies um, via those, you know, uh, proactive policies and approval process workflows, right, that you're able to put into the system. Uh, they don't have access to any corporate rates <laughs> at all. So you're able to take advantage of those discounts that you get uh, via Travel Perk. There's the customer care piece. 
there's streamlining your different workflows when it comes to integrations, time saved with reconciliations uh, from the reporting aspect as well. Uh, and then I would also say the flexibility. So there is, you know, customer care tying into being able to go and negotiate, um, you know, those refunds and credits on your behalf, but also having that flexi perk in-house travel insurance available to you uh, for organizations that already have, right, refundable rates sort of mandated across the board. Uh, if you look at what airlines are offering for refundable rates, it's usually a 20 to 60% additional cost. Hotels, it does tend to be around 10 to 15, so more on par with what Travel Perk offers. But if you were to think about this from a, a refundable sort of perspective, if Travel Perk is only charging 10%, uh, for those refundable rates, there's a big margin uh, for your team to save on those as well, which is very exciting. Now, I believe we're nearing towards the end. We did talk a little bit about policies and approval processes and, and flexible budgets and things during the demo itself. Uh, so if you have any more questions, please feel free to send them through. Uh, otherwise, I think we can go ahead and announce our winners. Does that work for you, Chris? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So the winners for today are going to be, drum roll, da -da 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 -da, <laughs> Daniela Sanders, uh, Jeff Clark, and Vincent Aguilar. So we will be in touch uh, with each of you with that $150 credit. Uh, we can also talk about any questions that you might have had here. We got some great ones in regards to your policies, your integrations, how we can set up your approval processes. So Chris and I are here to support you, make sure that everything goes smoothly for you on the platform. Uh, and please feel free to, to reach out to us at any time.